Tina, as always, thank you so much for giving us a little bit of your busy schedule. Now, the government has its Global Investment Summit on Monday here in the UK. It'll be one of the first times that international investors really get to know this new administration. Do you think they've done enough to try and attract investment to the UK? No, it's early days. I think they've absolutely set up their stall and it's right that they have put investment and growth at the heart of their strategy. The question is, how do they do it? Um, and what is the role of government in terms of really unlocking private capital? And that's both international capital and domestic capital. So having the opportunity to have this Global Investment Summit next week, I think is a great opportunity really for the government to set out its stall um, and really put a little bit more flesh on some of the ideas around and for example, the National Wealth Fund, and particularly the role of the UK Infrastructure Bank and the British Business Bank in terms of working with the private sector to de-risk some of these um, sort of longer-term investments that are so need needed in the UK. Are, are you optimistic about the prospects of the UK economy, but also you know, outside investment? I am actually. I mean, look, this year we do expect there to be quite sluggish growth in the UK economy. We've only had one interest rate cut so far this year, even though we're expecting another one later on in the year. But we do expect the pace of those cuts to accelerate into 2025. So that does create a positive backdrop for growth. Um, and at the same time, really what we're hearing from clients, and this is both international and domestic, is what they really value is the political stability that has been brought to the UK after the general election, but most importantly, wanting to see predictability and policy stability to allow them to invest in long-dated opportunities. And so, Tina, do you think that you know, the October 30th budget is, is a really big test for the government as, again, uh, the Labour Party hasn't been in power for a long time, so mm. what I'm hearing from big international investors is that they want to see really what it's about and it's the first time we get a proper test. That's absolutely right. So all attention is really focused on October 30 and we've already seen there's quite a lot of speculation with regard to what is going to be in the budget. You know, we have seen gilt yields rise, you know, over the last week um, as uh, there have been some concerns around increased investment spending. But certainly I think the government has done the right thing in terms of just setting out their intention around the right guardrails. The fact that that investment is not going to come all in one go. It's going to be phased across the, uh, the electoral cycle. Uh, and most importantly, that they intend on working closely with both the OBR and the National Debt Office or the National Audit Office because that will reassure both domestic and international investors. What are you most excited about in the UK? I know there's, you know, there needs to be more IPOs at some point, hopefully. Mm. Is London the right place for that? I think so. Um, I mean, for me, the UK is the gateway to the world. Um, and actually, when we look at the IPO market here in London, it has actually performed pretty well compared to previous years. So we have seen a significant increase in IPOs, admittedly from a low base. It's up about 50% so far this year. But most importantly, those IPOs have performed very well. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a backdrop with the rising FTSE and the interest rate environment that actually means the backdrop in terms of the macro environment is actually looking broadly positive for 2025. And certainly when we speak to the C-suite and to our corporate clients, they continue to look for opportunities to invest. Um, so that is key. So corporate balance sheets are strong. Um, there's been a lot of financing which has gone on in the debt capital markets, both for M&A financing, hybrid capital refis, liability management exercises. So that means that we don't see much stress in the system, which I think is also important. You've been in charge of Citigroup UK for a year. How's it been? I mean, there's, there's been a lot going on at the bank. There has. There's always a lot going on at City. But uh, the year has flown by and I really remain so excited about the opportunity in the UK. You know, where I've really been focused on is, is really taking advantage of City's global network. We're in 96 different countries, um, but really focusing on those key trade corridors for us. So we're looking to grow business between London and New York. Of course, the US is our home market, but also in fast-growing regions such as the Middle East and in countries such as India. So for me, it's not just about our banking business, but it's also about how can we deliver one city um, through our markets, our wealth, and of course our world-class services franchise. We are basically one year on from the biggest reorganization of Citigroup mm -hmm. uh, with the chief executive, Jane Fraser, putting a number of, of things in place. And you were talking about how you're also taking advantage of so, some of the unique challenges but opportunities that you have. What's been the biggest difference? 
So we have really simplified our management structures. Um, it sounds very mundane, but things like fewer committees, um, fewer meetings, uh, fewer management layers, we've reduced management layers, uh, in some cases out, down to you know, sort of 12 from 15, 16, 17. You know, so that means we can able, we're able to really speed up decision making much better and drive accountability. Uh, so that really has been, I think, the biggest change. Will you hire people in the UK now that you've kind of, do you have it where you want it to be? Mm. We're pretty much at the right size. Uh, we will continue to hire selectively as we always have done. So we've, we've recently uh, had our new head of our commercial bank for the UK join. He joined last week, James Morris. And of course, at our most senior levels, we've been able to hire some really world-class talent with Viz Raghavan joining as head of banking, Tim Ryan in terms of technology. So uh, it is less about actually hiring significantly. We'll always be strategic around needing to, to, to fill, um, fill roles. But at the at the same time, we have a really deep bench at City, so it's also around giving people within our own organization the ability to step up. You know, when you look at Europe, I mean, the banking world was like light with speculation and then I guess almost confirmation that there could be a merger, um, although the Germans don't want it, but between Commerzbank and, and Unicredit. Mm. How does that change the banking landscape and, and your world? Mm. So. I mean, the European banking sector has been highly fragmented forever, and there has been lots of discussion over the years around the need for banking union, capital markets union. So certainly from our perspective, I mean, we have a significant presence in Europe in many different countries. So for us, really, any developments that require or actually allow for a greater free flow of capital across the region, we would welcome because that allows us to deliver our cross-border capabilities more effectively. So uh, we look Look on with interest, but is, is it a litmus test of whether there's you know appetite for back, for political banking mm. consolidation? I think it's certainly going to be uh, an important moment um, for, for for European banks, and I think it's interesting both you know some of the comments that have come out from Mario Draghi in his most recent report around competitiveness in the EU, around regulation, and again the need to drive capital markets union. I think all plays into I think this next phase. Um, you know, when you look at, you know, I guess the banking landscape here in, in London, I know you're committed to Canary Wharf, but also maybe looking at other places. What, what, what do you mm. think happens to Canary Wharf? Well. As you know, Francine, I mean, we are committed to Canary Wharf. We're in the middle of a significant renovation of our iconic city tower. That's going to be completed in the middle of 26. So when that's done, we will have 10,000 people in London, the majority of which will be at the wharf. So I think it's a great environment to work in. And I think what Shobi is doing with regard to that mixed use, um, I think, is to be welcomed. Um, we also have 4,000 people in Belfast. So that has grown from the low 200s uh, about 20 years ago. So again, that is a region that we are very committed to. Tina, thank you so much, as always, for coming on. Tina Lee there, Chief Executive of City Group UK. Now coming up as